You've seen in the papers, it must be true. House prices will drop, plummet, 40%. Shockwaves left financial and currency markets trembling this morning when the pound plunged to an all-time low against the US dollar. The UK property market has never crashed by 40% in one year, ever. Stock markets have several times. 1.75 to 2.25 times. I've never seen rates so low, thank goodness. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Money Matters. You've seen in the papers, it must be true. House prices will drop, plummet, 40% in 2023. I want to look at those claims. I want to see who's making them and I want to see what the real truth is. My name is Paul Smith and I'm a property investor. I've been a property investor for the last 40 years. I want to just pick up on some of these headlines that we've all been seeing and really get behind the story and help you to understand how you can make sure that your pounds are not in the firing line. House price crash. Homeowners warned values could plunge about to 40% in huge blow. So whenever I see anything like that, I really want to understand what is it that's being said specifically, because the headline is not always the story, is it? Second, who's saying it? And third, should I believe them? This is the Daily Express from just a few days ago. UK house prices could, not so not will, it's interesting isn't it, could crash in the UK by as much as 40% over the next couple of years in a hammer blow to millions of homeowners. This is nice balance reporting, is it? No emotive language or anything like that. An expert has warned. Okay, as soon as I see that, who is the expert and should I believe them? Shockwaves left financial and currency markets trembling this morning when the pound plunged to an all-time low against the US dollar. Pound sterling nosedived, blah de blah de blah So the next level of question that I apply here is, well, pound against the dollar is doing whatever it's doing. How does that impact me as a UK property investor? Homeowners can be dealt a huge blow after being warned that unless the government is able to gain control of the situation, the UK could be heading for a massive house price crash. Graham Cox, director of Bristol-based Self-Employed Mortgage Hub, warned that 1.8 million borrowers exiting fixed rate deals next year simply won't be able to afford the mortgage payments. None of them? So there's 1.8 million people coming off fixed rate deals and they need to remortgage. This statement here is frankly ludicrous. How many people actually do you think, however, read further than the headline? Oh my God, we're doomed, I better not buy the property. Unless the government steadies the ship, we're heading for a house price crash of 20 to 40% over the next couple of years. So what this expert, Graham Cox, is saying that is, unless something's done about it, it potentially exists, possibly over the next few years, the house prices might drop between 20 and 40%. It's not what the headline said. There are 1.8 million borrowers coming off fixed rate deals next year. They simply won't be able to afford the mortgage payments, forcing them to sell or be repossessed. And again, all of them? Really? Come on, Graham. How many houses are bought and sold in the UK on any given normal month? Do you know? The answer is about 100,000. The numbers he's talking about are not scary in the context of the overall market, if you understand the overall market. If the pound does not start to recover, the Bank of England will likely make an emergency intervention and massively hike interest rates again from 1.75% to 2.25%. I started buying property in the 1980s. 1.75 to 2.25, so what the flip? I've never seen rates so low. For the historical interest rate, the average interest rate for mortgages is 7%. We're nowhere near that. So by historical standards, rates are very benign, they're very low. I wanted to pursue this further and learn more about this article. The person that wrote it is another Paul, not me. So I emailed him and said, dear Paul, I read your Express article with interest about a potential 40% price crash in property. You cite Graham Cox as being an expert making this prediction. In your view, what makes Graham an expert in this area? Regards, Paul. At the time of recording this, I've still not heard back. If I was a journalist, a professional journalist, I'd like to make sure that my source is credible. So that when someone does what I'm about to do, they can actually respond and say, well, yeah, actually, the reason I said he's, a, he's credible is because he's got this qualification, he's got these experiences, he's an economist, uh, he owns 10 million pounds worth of investment property, he's been doing it for 40 years. So I then went to look at, well, what is this self-employed mortgage hub? This is Graham Cox, this expert per the Daily Express article. And I found the website fairly quickly, and it's a brokerage that specialises in mortgages for people that are self-employed. 
Now this confused me for a couple of reasons. Number one, the expert that's saying everything's gonna crash and burn is saying that on one hand, but on the other hand, he's seeking to provide mortgages to people that are self-employed. Could there be a connection between the two? And my next level of curiosity was, okay, well, let's see if I can find out independently why Graham Cox might be an expert. So there's a you know, contact us type button, pressed it. I saw Graham Cox quoted as being an expert for Daily Express recently. I'm a landlord in the UK, which I am. I want to make sure I do the right thing. Could I get a bit more from Graham on why he thinks house prices will crash 20 to 40% next year? I'd much appreciate the response. Now, again, I haven't had any feedback on this one yet. So I then went to look for, well, who is this, where is this company registered? How long has it been in existence? So I went along to company's house. I found out their company number, yeah, and here it is. Given that company's house, Cardiff, on 29th of April, 2021. Nothing remarkable about that, just, I would say note and think. It's SIP code, which is standard industry code, is 64999. If you're interested and you look it up, you can see what they do. So it's a real company. Mr. Graham Robert Cox is their only company director. And you can see there that he's born in January 1969. And so this is me just kind of getting to know the company gently. I went to look for financial statements and there aren't any. So the company hasn't been in existence long enough yet in order that it would need to file anything at company's house. There is one share in the company and it's valued at one pound. It's a bit different from the capitalization of a rather larger company. And again, nothing suspicious or inherently wrong with that. So I went then and did something called a director search or a person search. And I wanted to know, in addition to Hub FS Limited, where I was struggling to understand where this expert status would come from. Is Graham, in fact, uh, a director of any other companies? And it returned me three. One of which was dissolved, so that's not really useful, is it? And the other one is XOC Marketing. The details you can see on the screen. And at least in that case, it was formed in January 2013. So I thought, okay, well, it's marketing. Has that got anything to do with you know, financial services, mortgage, economics, property investment. Don't know, but let's go and have a look. I looked up their last returns. So the last returns they put into company's house was the 31st of January, 2002. And you can see in terms of their balance sheet, as an accountant might say, it's a bit thin. This is a tiny company. Any company trading on any significant level will have tens, if not hundreds of thousands, if not millions of pounds of the bank. It just has to, in terms of working capital. I'm not seeing anything here that qualifies Graham, and I'm not having a go at Graham because there might be a load of things that I don't know. But there's nothing obvious to me in the public domain, company's house, company registration, director shell, where I can understand his expert status. So I then thought, well, let's go on LinkedIn and see what Graham talks about. And there he is, that's Graham and HubFS Limited, so he's saying, this is my company, which is fine. And he's talking about mortgages, remortgages, self-employed and small business, all of which are keywords designed to pull people to his mortgage self-employed website. So I went back and had a look at the self-employed mortgage hub website, and I could see, you know, as seen in The Guardian or whatever, The Evening Standard, and nothing wrong with that. Completely nothing wrong with that. Well done, Graham. But then in terms of a testimonial on his website, it says, and this is from a guy called Ian Barrow, I, find, I found Graham for an article in the Financial Times. That suggests to me that Graham might very cleverly use positioning in national newspapers by making statements, perhaps otherwise, uh, perhaps outrageous, perhaps not, as a way in which to go on a business for his company. So in other words, I'm struggling to understand where this expert status has come from. Then if I look at a more responsible publication, like the Financial Times, it says, jump in mortgage rates threatens UK property price crash. Market turmoil leaves more than two million borrowers or homeowners facing sharp rise in borrowing costs over the next two years. Now, that is what I would call balanced reporting. And if you read through all of the variable material, you say, well, okay, so the pound is weak against the dollar and the euro. What does that mean? It means that property in the UK is very cheap for foreign nationals or for people that have their income in maybe dollars or euros. The UK is an absolute haven for people that want safe year-on-year -year house price growth. They want assets. But a UK house or a UK property 
is very close to being unique. We've got a very stable political system in the UK. Our infrastructure, by which I mean our solicitors or accountants, are not corrupt. We don't have people running around the streets rioting. And as well as house prices going up for a very long time, if you're a property investor, the other thing you get is rent. But if you didn't put your money into UK property and you had pounds and you put them in the bank, well, here's the best I can see you could get return on your money. So we've got this bank called Ford Money. And I Googled this and they'll give you 1.95% up to a maximum of two million pounds. That would appear to me to be the best available. Now, there's other ones that might try and catch your attention, like the Nationwide says that they'll give you 5%. And yes, they will give you 5%, but on a maximum of one and a half thousand pounds. And as long as you go over that, um, the rate is nothing. For most people, let's say you get somewhere between one and two percent. Inflation is running at 10, 12, 15 percent. Choose your own number. So if you don't buy property, you will lose, if you keep it in cash, round about 10 to 12 percent of your purchasing power. Your money will be worth less each year. Stock market, well, the UK property market has never crashed by 40% in one year, ever. Stock markets have several times. Should you put it into crypto? Pretty brave, braver than me if you did that, because many cryptos have halved or even reduced by 70% in not even a year. What should I do with my money? Because putting that under your mattress really isn't an option, is it? The Nationwide started its survey in 1952, and it's published results every quarter since. You can just go online and look this up. And they say that over the last 12 months, if you had a, an average house, it would have gone up by 11.4%. If you had a new house, it would have gone up by 14.5%. If you take 20% off that, or well, 10% of 330, so 20% will be 60. So in other words, a 20% reduction will be roughly taking you back to 240,000 pounds, which is round about where house prices were Q1 2021. So you'd be going back in time about 18 months. But if I looked at it differently, and I said, well, over the next 12 months before it crashes, it's actually going up 15%, therefore a 20% crash, in relative terms, is gonna be a much, much smaller number. To look forward and say there's gonna be a crash and ignore the inflation, the increase in between, that's not what an expert would do, in my view. So if we take a very long view here of history, look at that chart. I drew a line at April 1982, and the average house price in the UK, see how close they are? 21,811 pounds. That's nationwide data versus government data. But since I've started investing in the last 40 years, we've never ever had a 20% crash, never mind a 40% crash. So the UK housing market has never gone down by 40%. It's never gone down by 20%. Crypto has, stocks and shares have. If I start to wind this up and give you a really long-term perspective on property. Shelter, the national homelessness charity, that does great work by the way, and KPMG. So they teamed up and they did this. They said, well, what are house prices going to be worth by 2034? And by 2034, could be worth 900,000 pounds. When I was born in 1964, the population of the UK was 50 odd million. It's now approaching 70 million. So we've got a load more people on a little crowded island. In order to keep pace with demand, we need to build close to 350,000 houses a year. We're building half of that. So the population is going, whoosh. the amount of houses is going up, the amount of homes is going up, but at less than half the rate we need. And the next fact you've got to put into that is, does it make business sense to buy houses and rent them out to other people? Well, yes, it does, because here's best buy um, rates for buy-to-lets. So you can still get a five-year fix for 3.16%. If you're a homeowner and you want a 90% mortgage, you can get a three-year fix at 4.85. So what that means is the markets expect rates to go up a little bit for the next year, two years, and then come down. I want to wrap this up by hand on heart, giving you my view. Do you think anyone that's been a property investor 40 years really cares if there's a slight wobble in the market next year. 20 to 40 percent are attention seeking headlines. Could it happen? Well, yeah, theoretically, an asteroid could hit the earth tomorrow, and just like the dinosaurs, we could all die. That's not the question. Could it happen? The question is, is it likely to happen, and what should I do about it? What I'm telling you is, they never have in the entire history of financial records. Never have. Stocks, bonds, commodities, they have. 
Four years from now, you won't remember Liz Truss or what she did on any given Friday. You'll just remember you bought your first property in 2022. Like me, you'll be looking back on your portfolio in 2062 and you'll be saying this, thank goodness for property. Really love to hear your comments. Am I right? Am I wrong? What did I miss? You've been wonderful. I've been Paul. See you.